Our kind. Oh, that's almost as bad as dope dope. my channel today we're gonna to be doing a Valentine's Day makeup look I'm so excited Valentine's Day is literally like in two days and it's one of my favorite holidays as are all holidays um, but I'm very excited about today's look because Colourpop sent me almost all of their Valentine's Day collection it is so gorgeous and you guys know I love my pinks and my burgundies and my sparkles and oh my goodness they have a glitterly obsessed glitter that you guys know I love I've been using them forever they have one with actual hearts in them I am so excited to put that on my eye, and I also can't wait to try out some of the new products. They sent me the Soul Body Face and Cheek Shimmering Highlight, and it is gorgeous. It's a baby pink color, so it's perfect for this Valentine's Day look. Um, and I haven't recorded a video or done makeup like for fun in a long time, so I'm super excited to play around with these eyeshadows. The palette is gorgeous, right up my alley, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be testing out a new primer. I just got this sent in the mail. This is by Revlon. I don't really use a lot of Revlon products, but I'm excited to try it because it kind of looks like they're revamping and rebranding, and this just doesn't look like a Revlon product to me, so I'm very excited. And they came out with a brand new line of primers. They have three different ones. One is for brightening, one is for mattifying, and then this is the smoothing and perfecting. This one has hyaluronic acid and vitamin B5. Um, so I'm interested to see the consistency of this. Uh, I don't have a primer currently. I just ran out of my favorite Laura Mercier one, and so I've just been using Eau Primer. So we'll see how this goes. What the heck? Ha! Got it. It kind of smells like... Skincare. I think, yeah, this is a makeup and skincare primer, so it has like things in it that are good for your face. I don't know. Um, it, it doesn't feel silicone-y, but it does kind of feel like it has a little bit of a gripping property to it. It's a little sticky, but if that's what you like in a primer, then you're, you're gonna like, oh, it's very sticky. Oh my gosh, do you see this? My hands stick to it. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna hold the makeup on, that is for sure. It's not hydrating though, which is what I like, but we will see how the makeup goes on, on top of it. Also, these earrings are Rosie June, as are all my earrings, and I got a bunch of compliments on these today, and she just has literally the most amazing earrings ever. Um, for foundation, I still use the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear 24 Hour. Um, I'm in the shade 410 right now, which is like my palest shade, and it's a little actually too pale for my face, but. Oh well, my other one is way too dark. Um, and I'm just gonna use Damp Beauty Blender and just throw this on my face real quick. All right, foundation on. This is literally my favorite foundation. I've tried so many and I've been stuck on this one for so long. It is so good for how inexpensive it is and it lasts forever. That's the foundation I wore on our wedding day and I loved how it photographed and it just looks so good on. It doesn't have like a luminous dewy property, which is weird because that's what I love, um, but it's also not matte and it's not drying either. So I really like it. So I just went in with Shape Tape under my eyes, like I always do. I'm using a new color though, so I always use light neutral, um, but for right, right now it's a little bit too dark. So I've started using Fair Beige to really brighten up um, just on that innermost corner of the under eye. And then to set underneath my eyes, I'm still using the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder, and I use it on this um, F20 ColourPop brush. They sent me all of their like bare necessity line, which included an entire new brush line, and. I really, really love them, and I love this brush for two things, actually. Um, it's a little bit large for under my eyes, but I literally get ready so fast, I just slap make like, powder and makeup on my face, so it doesn't really bother me, but I also double and use it for my contour because it's a really good um, brush. I'm actually a huge fan of the brushes that they sent me. Okay, most days I do not contour my face because I'm real lazy and I just slap bronzer on there. But if I do, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Bronzing Glow Palette. Um, not a fan of the highlight in there really at all. It's super dull, but I do like the color of the contour shade in here. It's very cool tone, but a lot goes, no, a little goes a long way. <laughs> so I have the tendency to accidentally use a lot. That's what I was trying to say, didn't come out right. But so you go, if I go in with a really light hand and just barely touch my face, See, I just already put like a huge polka dot, which is what we don't want. Um, you have to be very careful with this powder, but I love the color of it, so that's why I use it, but a little bit goes a long way. 
And I've seen, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say this real quick. I've seen so many people doing like makeup tutorials on Instagram and on IGTV and even on here. And so many people talk about putting their contour like below your like your cheekbone and like in this ear region. And I'm just here to tell you that's not doing anything for your face, sis. Um, contouring is supposed to like thin out your face and like highlight your facial structure. But if you are putting it like 45 feet down past your cheekbone, it's like actually elongating your face and making it look bigger than it is, which is not what you want. So a trick is actually to go a little bit higher than your cheekbone, and that's gonna really make this area pop. So I always, um, like I start here, but I always blend up. You'd never wanna blend down, cause then it's just gonna get muddy and dark and then like be blending down into your chin and it's just, that's just not the look. If I are you and you're really intimidated by doing contouring and you're like, I don't know where to put it on my face, feel for the bone and then go like a centimeter above it and always blend up. Don't blend down, cause man, I've seen some contours, if you know what I'm saying. I am for a bronzer. I'm still using the Soleil bronzer by Laura Mercier. It's just a real basic matte bronzer, but I love it. And I love the warm tone that it has. It might be a little warm for some, but I really like it because I'm a pale ghost and I like how it warms up my complexion. And then my favorite bronzing brush is still the Morphe M527. It does take up a lot of real estate, so you kind of have to be careful, again, not to blend too low because then it starts to get muddy and just does the opposite of what you want your bronzer and your contour to do. So, when in doubt, blend up, <laughs> never down. All right, the next product I'm gonna use is actually so random, but I have literally become obsessed with it and I use it every single day and it's so good. And hear me out because it's so random and it's from the most random place ever and you're like, how does that even work? So this is a lip and cheek like chubby stick and it's like a cream. It's by the brand Courtney Jean, which is actually a swimsuit company. And they sent me swimsuits and then they also sent me some makeup that they launched. And I was super skeptical, like there's no way this is gonna work. I'm not a fan of cream sticks very often, not gonna love it. Opened it up, first thing I noticed, it smells like a creamsicle, like an orange popsicle. So it smells like summer and I got it like at the end of December or in January. So like already I was like, okay, like that, it smells like summertime. Then I took it to Haiti with me and I used it as my blush um, when we went to church and we went, when we went to the beach and it's so natural, but it's, it, it does give off color if you layer it, which is what I do. Um, it has a nice sheen to it, it's very like, just my skin, but better, like summer days out by the pool, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I got real risky one day and I put it on top of makeup, on top of powder, just to see what would happen, because I really like the color, and it didn't pick it up, it didn't drag it, it didn't get weird, it literally just layered on top of it beautifully, and it gave my face such a nice, like, wet glow look, and oh my goodness, I love it so much, and I wear so much of it because I love the tone of it, I love the color of it, so it might be a little too loud for you, but I love it, and it's a very good hidden gem because, like, why on earth would you look for blush on a swimsuit website? You wouldn't, but now you know that they're really good, and they have a little shimmer to them, so if you're not a highlight type, but you want a little glow, you could just use this, and it kinda is the best of both worlds. So I use a regular like blush brush for this and it worked. I've also used a beauty blender and that works too. That does get a little grabby and weird sometimes so you just have to be careful. Um, but this is the F21 by ColourPop and I just load the heck out of it because it's such a sheer product. You can't, at first you can't really put on too much but if you keep layering then you will get like way more color payoff. But I just load the brush up a ton and then I dab it on either like a towel or the back of my hand to make sure it's like an even distribution. And then I just go to town and I love it. And I even kind of drag it up my temples into my bronzer and it's just like a summer, summer glow and I really like it, so. And again, I've already set my face with the Laura Mercier translucent powder. I didn't put like tons of it on my actual cheekbone and like the apple of my cheek, but it's there because I, I did it under my eyes and blended it down. I did it around my mouth and blended it out. So there's definitely powder there and this still goes on super well, which was, I was not expecting that. So it is a win-win. Right, so that's just one layer of it. And as you can see, my face kind of looks like wet, like dewy wet. It's like sweating a little bit in the summertime and that's what I like. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit more just to show you that you can make it even brighter. 
which is my jam, so I love blush. Yeah. In my book, you can't have too much, but apparently you can. So if you have oily skin, I'm not sure that you would like a product like this because it does stay like damp. So my face will still be like kind of sticky, but I don't mind it because I have really, really dry skin. And then especially in the summer with like a tinted, S um, tinted SPF or like a tinted moisturizer, this, and then like a liquid highlight, that would be like, my jam, um, but when I go in with a powder highlight, now it has something to stick to, so then it makes your highlight like even more blinding. So I love that combo, but again, that's, that just might be a me thing or a dry skin thing, but if you're in the market for a new blush, you might check that out. Um, and it's not that expensive either. I think it's like $20. Um, all right, so I'm gonna try out this new highlight by Soul, which is like the sister company of ColourPop. Uh, they just launched this new highlight shade. It's called Soft Pink. I can't get it open. All right, so it is like very pink, iridescent, pearl-esque. So I might go in with something else and then put that on top because that has a tendency to go really cool on me really quick. So I'm gonna put like a yellowy gold color first and then go in with this one. Oh my gosh. All right, so first I'm gonna go in with the um, Jaclyn Hill highlighting palette. I have the Flash, which is the lighter one. Also, highly recommend. I really like this palette and the formula of the highlights. So I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this is like a pinky highlight with a gold undertone. And then the one that ColourPop sent me is like a pink highlight with a blue undertone. So I'm still gonna put that on because it's gonna make it brighter and make it more like beaming. But I'm gonna go in with this one mixed with like straight gold just so it's a little warmer for my warm complexion. All right, and now I'm gonna go in with this ColourPop one and I'm just gonna put it on the highest points of my cheek and also not blend it um, down into my blush, which is something I usually do, but I don't want this to make my face look too um, bluey, cool tone. So, just gonna use a little. All right, so this has a really good formula. It's just not my favorite color. Um, if it was literally any other color than this, I would wear it like all the time. And I know that's super um, affordable. And this one smells like um, sunscreen, like beachy, banana, tropical, which are all great things, but I just don't love the undertone. But it's still pretty, went on really nice. Um, I have a lot of highlight happening right now, but I love that. So I'm gonna spray my face real quick with MAC Fix Plus just to melt everything together. I'm also gonna run some brow gel in my eyebrows. I've been using the Sephora Collection brow gel. Um, they came out with an entire new brow line and they have so many colors and I really like the brow volumizing fiber mascara and I use the shade 5 deep brown and that's the only thing I've been using in my eyebrows. I skipped uh, filling them in with powder or pencil or anything and I literally I just run it through and I like the way it looks. They also came out with a clear brow gel which is good but I like the fiber building ones so I can make them look a little bit bigger than they are. So I'm gonna do both of these things really quickly off camera and then I will be back to do our eyes. All right, so I have the All That palette by ColourPop. So this is their Valentine palette this year. <laughs> Oops, and it's very burgundy-esque, which I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, these are a little bit darker, a little more vampy than I was hoping to do today. Um, I'm a big fan of like bright pinks, bright purples, fuchsias, magentas, that kind of thing. So um, I might bring a few other colors in to make it a little bit brighter. Um, let me look in the So Jaded palette really quick. Nope, not gonna work. Um, that's not gonna work either. Hold please. All right, I got my James Charles Morphe palette out just in case I need to brighten up the situation. There's a bunch of vibrant neon type shades in that palette. So I might jump into that if I'm feeling like it's a little, a little dark and dusty. So I'm going to pick up some brushes again by the new ColourPop line. These are all a part of like the Bare Necessities line. They also launched a new palette, the Bare Necessities palette, and it is just um, like neutrals and they're very warm. And then there's also some cool tones. And this is like a very good everyday palette. I have been using it like nonstop since they gave it to me. So it's real good. And then I love the brushes as well. These are only like not even half of them. They have all face brushes and all eye brushes and they have every shape and size that you would need, which makes it real easy when you're creating a look. So I'm gonna go in first with our biggest fluffy brush from the collection and it's called the E15. And I just have concealer on my eyes and I haven't set it with powder or anything. So I'm gonna use 
probably a mix between these two um, lighter shades. One is like a bone shade and one is more of a pinky color. And just kind of dust this all over the eyelid with a really big fluffy brush. This is going to help set um, any concealer or if you use like an eyeshadow base. I'm not like packing it on by any means. I'm just making it so the rest of my shadows don't skip on um, damp patches or anything like that. And this also kind of gives you a very like clean slate, cohesive looking base so that it's not patchy. All right, sorry, forgot we weren't zoomed in. So now we're zoomed in and I'm actually really liking this light pink color. It goes on a lot more vibrant than it looks in the pan. It looks super like dusty and dull in here. Um, that's the shade BB Girl and I like how bright and like kind of fluorescent it is. So I might end up using a lot of that shade. Um, I'm gonna go in now with this shade right here and it's like a dusty mauve color. And I'm just gonna uh, put this in the crease and blend it. Well, starting on the outer corner and then blending it into the crease and just basically going over all of the color we just put down. And then I'm gonna go back in with that first um, light pink shade, the BB Girl shade, on a smaller fluffy brush and I'm gonna use this to really blend out the edges of that darker pink. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with this color right here. This is like a just straight up like burgundy-ish color. It's kind of a little bit more like red whiny because this one over here is like the deeper version of that. Um, so that's probably gonna be the darkest shade that I use. But first I'm gonna go in with the lighter burgundy and this one is called Silhouette. And I'm gonna put this in the outer V and also blend it towards the crease, but I'm gonna keep this one um, a little bit lower and a little more like concentrated and not as blown out. So I'm gonna use a smaller blending brush for this. This is the E19 and it's the smallest blending brush I have right now here with the ColourPop collection. So I'm just gonna take this and it's a little dusty and it might be the kind of shade that um, stains. I think I read on the back. Nope, not that one. There are two shades in this palette that are like suggested to not put on your immediate eye area, which I think is the dumbest thing I've ever read because it's an eyeshadow palette. Um, but I think that they just are putting that on there to be safe because some red shadows have the tendency to stain eyelids just because of the pigment that's in them. Um, and then you always wanna be careful with glitters and it says that about a pressed glitter in here too um, because they don't wanna be like liable if something goes funky with your eyes because you put glitter on them. So just be careful. I do have a few like chunky glitters like this that I my eyes get super irritated with, so you just gotta be careful. And I'm just gonna pat this on at first to place the product um, like exactly where I want it, and then I will blend out the edges. But right now I'm just tapping, and I'm gonna do it in like a almost like a wean liner like V type situation, um, and then we can I might like blend a darker color into the lash line to do like a faded blended liner look instead of adding true like winged liner. All right, so now I'm gonna deepen up that exact same shape with the darkest burgundy in the palette and just go over exactly what we did, but I am gonna try to keep it a little bit closer to the lash line. Um, that way it's kind of acting as our liner. All right, so I ended up actually using this little tiny detail brush. This is like a miniature flat brush, um, and it really helped me to like pat the color and kind of get like a straight line at the lash line and to blend it out towards my outer corners. And then I smudged it in with this tiny detail blending brush. And I really like how this is looking so far. And I'm just gonna throw a shimmer on, add a little bit of glitter and put some lashes, nope, I don't wear lashes, put some mascara on. I would wear lashes and ColourPop came out with a new pair of lashes for the Valentine collection, but um, 
I have a real hard time with them. And I feel like every time I wear fake eyelashes, like the next two days I get, um, within the next two days I get a sty. So I have like stopped wearing lashes and lash glue because there was a time in my life where I was wearing them frequently and um, I got styes like every other week. Um, but these are the Bay Faux Lashes. Oh my gosh. If I throw one more thing, um, and they are uh, completely cruelty free, and they are fluffy, and they look like all those fancy expensive ones, um, but they're not. And I really like ColourPop's lashes, but I will not be putting them on today. Um, for my lid shade, I think I'm gonna use this one right here, um, and it's super duper, super duper shiny, and I have a feeling it's gonna just chunk and fall all over my face, because that's my luck. Um, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use my finger and see what happens. Um, I probably should use a brush so that it doesn't go everywhere, but when in Rome. Okay, pause. I'm actually gonna go in with, <gasps> I dropped something else. Um, I'm gonna go in with this one first, and this is like a metallic shade, so it has a little more like slip to it, and it has, it's a little more shadowy, if that makes sense. The other color in the palette is just like a straight glitter pressed down, uh, which is great, but it doesn't have like a base color to it, and it's very PC. Um, they kind of go everywhere, so I'm gonna put the more metallic shade down first. Um, the shade is called Infatuation, and it has a little more slip and slag to it, so it's easier to work with. Um, in hindsight, I would have put this on first, not putting it on top of glitter, but this is gonna give us more of like a base, and then I'm gonna put the glitter on top of it. That way it's not like skin showing through the glitter, it's an actual color. And my finger seems to be working fine, which is great. And then when I get to that outer corner where we did all that darker blending work and stuff. I'm just gonna use less and less pressure and pat, pat, pat out until it kind of just fades away to nothing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the pressed glitter and just tap this on top of that color. So you can see this eye is just the metallic shade and then this eye has the glitter pressed on top of it. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but on the left side without the glitter, it's a little bit more like understated. And then when you add the glitter on it, it's just a little more poppy. And then when the light hits it, um, there's a bunch of different color reflex in it. And I kind of like to blend out and tap out and diffuse the glitter like probably way too high up towards my eyebrow, but I like that kind of look. Um, so I just I just use my finger like almost 99% of the time when I'm doing my eyeshadow, even like day to day, I'll just do a like a light pink or a champagne um, metallic shade and I just press it on with my finger. And if you press like very hard and um, like put a lot of color on your lid and then tap it out up towards your brow bone and it kind of fades out, it kind of looks like the illusion of like two different shades because it's lighter in your crease and darker on your lid. So that's what I do like on normal days. Um, I usually don't wear these colors but sometimes I do um, and so now for the main event here is the um, like glitter pot and um, this is the shade love language and then, like I said in the beginning it has actual hearts in it it is so cute so sometimes I don't have very good luck with the consistency of these sometimes when you use a brush um, when you tap on an area that already has it on your lid and go in again it kind of picks it up so you have to be a little careful I find that it works kind of best when I use my finger. So we will see. Sometimes I do a mix of both until I get like the coverage I'm looking for. Um, but this is pretty damp, but it does dry down. I'm just gonna tap this. I think I'm gonna just kind of do it in the middle of my eye um, and hope that a heart comes out and lands somewhere. Yes. One eye has a heart and one does not. So I'm gonna try to place one very strategically with this brush and put a heart on my other eye. But if it's not sticking, then it's just not sticking and it wasn't meant to be. Okay, you probably can't see it on camera, but I got some hearts in there. We got some glitter everywhere and I love it. Um, this is so fun and 
I wear them on like non-holidays too. They have some other fun colors. Um, another brand that I like is, um, I think it's like Lemonhead or yeah, I think that's what it's called. I don't remember. I'll put it in the description box, but um, those ones are a little more expensive, but these are just as good. But the Lemonhead ones are very, like they're very unique, the color combinations. But I also have a clear one by ColourPop that you can put on top of any shadow look and it just like, jazzes it up so really like that one also because it's super versatile i'm just going to throw a tiny bit of liner um right where my lashes are just to deepen them up at the root so i'm going to throw this on throw some mascara on and then we are all put our lips on and we'll be finished with the look oh wait i'm going to just run some colors underneath my lash line in no particular order with no rhyme or reason i'm just going to use a bunch of the colors i use on top underneath and just blend it out all right, so ColourPop sent me this new um, tint lipstick thing, and it's like a cute little set. It's like the perfect little gift, but I have a feeling that I'm not gonna love this formula because I like to have my lip color like show up, and I have a feeling these are gonna be just like balmy and like something you keep in your purse and just throw on for like a touch of color, uh, which is not my vibe, but I'm gonna try it anyways and just see how it goes. Uh, they're scented, and I think they're supposed to smell like fruit they smell like cat pee, but um, if you're into that kind of thing, then you're gonna love these. Um, but they're real cute and they're miniature. Yeah, it's gonna look like nothing. Um, hold on, let me get the foundation off my lips and then we will try this again. All right, so they're not bad and they actually have more color than I was expecting them to. Um, this would be great to like wear on a normal everyday basis and like I said, like keep it in your purse and stuff. But to me, it's like the makeup look isn't complete because it just looks like I don't have much lipstick on and it's very hard to get like a harsh sharp line so it looks a little bit like undone but if that's like your natural no makeup look type thing then you would really like this um, formula but chubby sticks are like my least favorite formula for lipstick so I'm gonna put a liquid lipstick on. Um, a one by Colourpop that I really like is this one from their Disney collection, the designer collection. It's the shade Prince Philip so I don't know if they still have even if they still sell these but their liquid lipsticks are great, but there's something about this formula that is like, um, it's more like their blotted liquid lipsticks and it's very lightweight on. And this is like a, a ruby red type shade. It's kind of raspberry-esque. It's not like fire engine red and I really like it. But sometimes I put this on and then I put a lighter pink on the center of my lips and kind of blend everything out. And then it's like an ombre and it's not as intense. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put a lighter liquid lipstick in the center. This is the Sephora Collection Cream Lip Stain, which is my favorite formula ever. And then you just kind of pat your lips together and it starts to like ombre itself. And then if you feel like you've accidentally like blended it all together and you've lost the ombre, you can just go back in with your darker shade. And I just do on the outer corners, like the very outer corner and then together and then I blend the edges and then it kind of does it for you. And then if you were a gloss person, that would be like the great time to put that on because then it kind of blends everything together and makes it look a little more seamless. I just don't love gloss. So this is where I'm gonna keep it. And I really like how it turned out. Um, this is my bestest friend in the whole world. This one, this is Nancy. Nancy, make her come to the other side. There she is, my baby. This is my big teddy bear. Are you excited to be on the, on the videos? Are you excited to be on the videos? Okay, you can get down. All right, so that brings us to the end of today's video and today's Valentine's makeup look. I really like how it all came together. You guys know by now that I love ColourPop makeup. If you've seen any of my other videos on here, pretty much every single one features ColourPop. Um, they are so affordable and so good at what they do and they are constantly releasing new products and new lines. And you know I love themed things. So when I saw this Valentine's makeup, I was so excited and could not wait to put it on. Um, and I really like how the lip turned out as well. And it just so happens to like really go with my earrings. So I really like it. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new, found it fun. Um, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.